All right, welcome to part two of balloon fishing. Uh, today I want to talk about choosing the spot uh, first before we dive into the tackle. I also want to talk about the general gear that we bring, Teresa and I, when we're balloon fishing off the beach. So this is a learning process, and if you if you hit me back up in a year from now on this balloon fishing, the gear that I use is probably going to be a little bit different than what we're doing now because this is a learning process. So I encourage comments below from you experienced surf guys that can add something because this is half surf fishing is, is what it is. So, um, well, here we go. This is what I'm doing right now. Uh, oh, oh, yeah, picking the spot. Now, I'm not real good at reading guts and current flow like these hardcore surf guys are. Which is I just kind of go to where I know there's a structure, where there's a snorkel reef or where there's a pier or, or just where I've caught fish in the kayak. That's kind of just how we're picking the spots. And another main issue for picking a spot is tourists. Right, Teresa? Mm-hmm. We, yeah. just, we just try to pick a spot away from people. There's pretty much fish running all our beaches, so just finding a spot away from people is critical in the Florida Panhandle. Okay, so some of the gear that we bring. We carry all the stuff to the beach, so I, I designed a little carry system for my PVC pipes that we pound in for rod holders. I just drilled little holes. I do have a video on this, go check it out. A lot of people are saying, your, your sand spikes are so small, man. Well, I initially made them to be light because we were walking far distances. Um, I may extend them out now that we're getting heavier into this. Here, okay, what's this big goal post up here up top? Since we've been doing so much of this, I noticed every time we came back to, to build a new rig or bait up, we were looking for a spot to lean our, our rods. And so I just kind of came up with a piece of PVC with another one through it. I heated it up and bent it, screwed it in. And we stick that in our rigging station. Everybody can just walk up and lean a rod without getting their reels in the sand because you cannot lay any reels in this sand here, it'll destroy them. All right, so some of the general gear that we bring, uh, starting off with the the, the um, pliers and stuff. We're dealing with a lot of steel leaders, so I bring a good pair of dikes, a good pair of cutting tools. General pair of pliers to keep on my hip for rigging. Fish grip is always great for holding small sharks and toothy fish. And then uh, you need something, some kind of a tool for if you do hook up with sharks and we and sharks love to hit the balloons um, in the high water column. So I go ahead and bring some four ounce diamond weights and some surf casting rods just in case the wind dies or we end up not being able to use the wind to our advantage. I bring live bait hooks because this is how we catch all of our bait. 90% of our bait is caught at the beach. We use live bait caught there and that's what's one of the funnest things about this process to me is that we're catching our bait on the spot and we're sending it out. It's a blast. But I bring a lot of perch hooks or number six Mustad tiny stainless steel hooks, but they make great bait catchers. They're super solid. If you end up hanging something big, bull drum or something, you'll land it with that. I keep some of these, I guess it's a quarter ounce, and I'll show you how I make my bait catching rigs with this quarter ounce and that um, little number six Mustad here in another video. I'll do a bait catching video separate. Always bring e-shot for energy. Catching the bait with fish bites, which I'll do in a separate video. We stop by the dollar store. That's where we're getting all these from. And we get, I get regular balloons as backup plan. They work fine. But for a three for a dollar, these punch balloons are thicker and they get a lot bigger. Uh, I, I like to blow them up and tie it with the, with the nipple right there, straight to the leader. But can't beat these from the dollar store, three for a dollar. And these are a dollar for a whole dozen or so. So always have some of these for backup. Single strand wire seems to work the best for me, which I'll get into later when I'm rigging the rod. Uh, it's stiffer and it keeps me from getting cut off as much, but we'll get into that more. Like I say, as we go on with this balloon fishing, it's gonna develop, especially a year from now, we keep trying these different leaders and these different balloons and tactics. I bring an assortment of leader, of 80 pound fluoro or mono and I just got some assorted 40 trolling stuff I use offshore 27 pound seven strand uncoated I just have it handy in case I feel like I need it because I'm trying to figure this out I've been using these seven aught Berkeley's and a bunch of random old stuff I've had seven aught circle hooks and I've been using a lot of stingers these little mustad trebles. I think I might actually go to a big treble up front. 
Still kind of learning. Don't forget my angle cooler. I've been bringing this with me every trip and I'm able to fit all my gear in there with a shoulder strap carry it down to the beach. It doubles as a seat so when I get my stuff out of my angle cooler on my gear I can sit on top of it and rig which is really nice. So there you go. There's some of the essentials that I bring when I go balloon fishing. Stay tuned. I'm going to do another video on bait catching rig and then the final video is going to be on the actual rods I'm using, the line, and how to make the leader and how I'm connecting the balloon to the leader. Thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you next time right here on Tips with Ty. What?